Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new here. Thank you for checking out this video. Today we're going to be discussing how you can film your process when you're creating artwork. Um, you've probably seen videos on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media platforms of artists filming their creation process. And you might be wondering exactly what equipment are they using? What kind of angles are they uh, using to get certain views, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to address that here in this video, and I hope to be able to clear some things up for you. Obviously, what I'm going to be telling you here isn't letter of the law. It's not the only way to do things. These are just some ways that I do things, and I hope that it can help you out. So first, let's talk a bit about equipment, what you need. First, you're going to need a camera. I'm just going to look at my list here so I don't lead you astray. You're going to need, if you're doing a, like a tutorial or anything like that, you're going to need a type of microphone. You'll need some lighting. You'll need a tripod. I use a boom arm for my camera in some shots and a boom arm for my microphone. And you're going to need um, a phone holder if you use your phone to, uh, to do the filming. So let's take a first look here at the camera. Um, Cameras, this is becoming something that is much easier for everybody to use because cameras on cell phones are becoming so much better. So me personally, I started filming my YouTube videos with a Samsung Galaxy S6. I used that for quite a few years up until 2020 uh, when I upgraded to an S9, still not brand new. The S9 was a couple years old at that point. And just a couple months ago, I bought an iPhone 11. So this is what I'm using to film this video at this time. Um, I've never really used a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, a standalone camera for any of my filming, um, but those are good options as well. The reasons that um, I don't have one of those is because um, they're expensive. <laughs> a base price for a good one starts around $500. Um, and for me, it would only have the one use. It would only be that just filming videos and for me i like having equipment that costs a lot of money that i can use for multiple purposes uh, if you're using a dslr or a mirrorless camera to take uh, high quality images of your larger artworks to then make prints out of that's a super good use um, for that uh, i'm fortunate enough that my dad actually it likes He's really into photography. He has a really nice camera, and I live close enough to him that whenever I need to take uh, photos of my artwork that I can't scan, I'm close enough I can just borrow his camera. So for me, I don't really have a strong need of a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, a high-quality camera. Uh, my phone works perfect for that. But depending on your experience, uh, what's available to you, maybe you're going to want to to purchase one and that's totally fine. Um, a lot of them have, have some great specs and they can be used um, used very easily for, for filming uh, these types of videos. Um, then you're going to need uh, a microphone. So when I first started out, I just used like, I think it was a $40 lapel microphone that I got off of Amazon. Um, it, it worked fine for, for a little bit. Uh, now I use a Yeti X microphone. That's what I'm using in this video right now. The quality was quite a bit better. The price was, you know, four or five times the price. It was a little bit more expensive, but for the quality of sound that I'm getting, I find it to be much better. Um, you're going to need to look at considering um, for the audio what your setup is going to be like. Um, if you're going to be using a DSLR phone, can you plug your microphone right in? It might not microphone, camera. Are you going to plug your microphone right into your camera? What are you going to do with that? Um, for me, I just plug it into my computer and I have an audio recording going on on my computer uh, while I'm recording. And then I just line it up afterwards. Not the most ideal, but it, it still works pretty good. Uh, one of the important things I think is lighting. If you have a workspace that has a lot of natural light, you're very fortunate and that um, that will work, be the best and work the best for you. I work in my basement and so there isn't a lot of natural light down here unfortunately. And so I use a few different kinds of lights to uh, try to get the best lighting available for me. I have a two of those um, you know, panel lights, I'll put a picture here so you can see, that plug into the light sockets. Um, so I, the two light sockets in the room that I work in, I have those in there that spread a lot of nice bright white light around the room for me. Then I have a set of uh, newer uh, LED panel lights that come with stands. Here's a picture of it as well that move around and they help give me a lot of good even lighting. That's what I'm using right now while I'm filming this. 
And then I started using, like when I was, when I first started painting, I started, I used with uh, an ot light, a little ot light. And that clips onto, you know, at the back of my workspace or the top of my easel or anything like that. And it helps just give me a little bit more intense lighting exactly where I'm working. And um, I've enjoyed using that over the years. But lighting is going to be really important. The better your lighting, the better recording quality that your camera can actually get as well. Whether you're using a standalone camera or your cell phone to record. So make sure you have good lighting. Sometimes I've just gone outside and just worked outside um, to get some good lighting. All right, then uh, for certain views, you might need a tripod. Um, I just bought my tripod at a local electronics store. It's nothing special, but it does the trick for what I need. Some tripods will start as low as, I saw one on, for $26 on Amazon to hundreds of dollars on Amazon. So take a look at what you need. You probably don't need anything too fancy. Um, just something that can either hold your camera or hold your cell phone. If you're using a cell phone, you're gonna need a little adapter to uh, hold that cell phone on the tripod on the tripod the one that i bought was 11 or 12 dollars off of amazon and it's been working awesome for me uh, for some shots for some views you're going to need a boom arm for your camera and that will allow your camera to be held above the artwork that you're working on here's a picture of the one that i use um, for a long time I didn't use one quite this sturdy and I regret not just spending the extra 50 bucks or whatever this was and getting it because it has improved the quality of these types of videos immensely. And then you're going to need a boom arm for your microphone if you're if you're doing a video that requires a microphone. So for some tutorials um, I'll be using a microphone or videos like this. I have my boom arm there attached to the side of my workspace so that I can have it there and put it wherever I need it to. So you can see here, I just have it attached here. And for me, I just have it just out of uh, view of the camera, but then it's still right there in front of my, in front of my mouth where it can pick up the sound um, just as good as it needs to. So that's a little list of the equipment. Let's kind of go over here. If you're wanting to have that nice tabletop workspace area view, um, that's where I use a boom arm and for me I'm fortunate I guess to have an unfinished basement and so I have you know like the wooden um, beams in the ceiling and I can just attach my boom arm to that and then just have it extend down above my workspace and the camera can be held there if you don't have that you could attach it to the side of your desk to a shelf behind the desk to a small table beside your desk as well I try to stay away from attaching my camera to the desk that I'm working on because um, when I'm working then I'll often be bumping the table um, while I'm painting or just the little vibrations of of my paintbrush that will affect the camera stability and that'll show up uh, whether you're doing a tutorial or a time lapse or anything like that it'll show up there in your video and it just doesn't make it as as good as it could be um, then I'll have my um, microphone boom arm attached to the desk that I'm working on because it doesn't matter if it moves around a little bit and it'll be just out of view of um, the shot where I can talk into it and then I'll have lighting just around me I try to have one my ot light behind attached to my desk and then I have two of the panel lights um, to the sides just to cast as much light as possible for me um, working in a darker basement because uh, the more lighting that I can have there um, the better quality of video it will be and so here's a photo of my setup. I'll let you look at this for a second. You can see the boom arm from the ceiling, the lights around, um, the microphone there, and then my workspace below. And then here's a shot as well of the workspace from the camera being in uh, mounted in place. And you can see what, what the camera can actually see there. So this is good for smaller artworks, um, ones that can fit on a workspace and uh, it can it's good for time lapses or tutorial videos or anything like that um, either work perfectly in this one if you have any additions that you'd like to add to this or any questions just let me know in the comments below I'll be more than happy to listen or to give my input on that all right the second uh, view that we're gonna be looking at is just the easel view so a lot of times we like to, uh, to work on easels sometimes your artwork that you could be working on is way too big to work on a tabletop and so you need to put it on an easel but you still want to film your process um, so this is where I'll use a tripod instead of a boom arm so my tripod tripod will be set back um, for me at an angle 
I don't like to have it directly square onto the canvas because then when I'm working on it, I'm covering up a lot of the workspace um, and you're not able to, the, the viewers of that video aren't able to see as much as um, if it was at an angle. So me being right-handed, I like to have that shot coming in from the left if possible. Um, because I'm not covering up as much with like my shoulders and arms. Sometimes it just doesn't work out that way and I shoot it from the right side and that's fine. Um, but that's just a little thing to think about while you're working on that. If it is a tutorial, I will have my microphone attached either to a small table beside me or to the top of my easel. And the microphone in this case is just going to be in the shot and that's fine. Uh, it doesn't always have to be hidden. It, it can be in there as well. For the lights though, I will have the lights, uh, my panel led panel lights further back out of the camera shot and i'll have them coming in at different angles to spread out um, the light as much as possible and sometimes i will have the little ot light the little clamp light on top of the easel uh, down onto the spot that i'm working on on the canvas just showing a little bit more light sometimes that won't work the greatest when you're filming as it can kind of white out uh, the spot that you're working on so i try my best not to always um, have that on, have that on there um, but yeah, those are the main two uh, views that um, that I've seen people work with. If you have any others that you'd want to show, um, that's totally fine. Uh, you can add those into the comments below. If you're wondering about any of these products that I do use, I will link them below um, in the description. I also have a written version of this video that you can check out on my website with everything linked in there of all the different products that I use. Um, I've just kind of gathered some things over the years to help me produce better videos and um, one thing that I would definitely say is lighting is super important and something to hold your camera in the, in the best place is also very important because with that you can easily do time-lapse videos and things like that where you don't need a microphone and a boom arm for your microphone and all that kind of stuff and then you can post those videos and hopefully help you make sales of your artwork um, so yeah thank you for watching this video I hope this has helped if there's anything you'd like to add again please do it in the comments below so we can get some discussion going make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video onto my channel and we will see you next time on Brian Sloan Artist